What's the secret sauce? Does meditation somehow make you immune to fatigue? Ever hit that wall during a workout? You know, when your body's raring to go, yeah. but your brain's basically waving the white flag. Yeah, that mental fatigue is no joke. Today, we're diving into the world of meditation and endurance to see if maybe, just maybe, unlocking your mental game could be the key to pushing past those limits. It's a whole new frontier. Yeah, it's fascinating how much research has emerged in just a few years. What's really striking is how the mind is this like untapped resource for endurance athletes. Okay. We're not just talking about meditation for relaxation here, but as a potential performance enhancer, like on a whole other level. We know mental fatigue is real, but can it actually be the deciding factor even for these elite athletes? And the science seems to be saying, yeah, it can. Wow. And it all comes down to, you know, how our brains are wired. Okay, so let's unpack that a bit. We keep hearing about mindfulness and meditation causing actual physical changes in the brain. What's the deal with that? So back in 2011, there was this study in psychiatry research, neuroimaging. They found that just 30 minutes of daily meditation for eight weeks. Eight weeks, okay. Literally changed the structure of the brain's gray matter. No way. Yeah specifically in the areas associated with stress, focus, and concentration. We're talking reduced stress levels, improved focus, better emotional regulation, like the whole nine yards, all from rewiring those neural pathways. It's pretty amazing. So it's not just about like feeling zen. You're actually building a brain that can handle the pressure cooker of you know, intense physical activity. Precisely. And that brings us to this 2024 study in the Journal of Sports Sciences. They wanted to see if this brain training could actually translate into better athletic performance. Oh, interesting. So they actually studied athletes for this one, not just your average meditators. Exactly. They had two groups, 24 athletes who meditated regularly and 25 who didn't, but get this all matched in terms of their athletic experience, their training volume, even their baseline cognitive abilities. Wow, they really controlled for everything. Oh yeah, so any differences they found could be linked you know, more confidently to the meditation. Okay, so what'd they do with these athletes? They use something called the Stroop test. Have you heard of that? Uh, maybe. <laughs> Refresh my memory. Okay, so imagine having to say the color a word is written in, but the word itself is a different color. Okay, I think I vaguely remember this. Like the word re-D is written in green ink. So your brain wants to say re-D, but you have to like overwrite it and say green. Oh yeah, that is really hard. It is incredibly tough. It simulates the kind of intense focus you need during you know, endurance sports where you're constantly battling that urge to just slow down or give up. Right, your brain is screaming at you. Exactly. They basically put these athletes' brains through a mini marathon. I love it. So what'd they find? What's the big reveal? Well, the meditators. Their endurance level stayed strong even after that mentally demanding task. The non-meditators, however, saw about a 4% dip in their performance. 4%. Hmm. I mean, that might not sound like a lot, but for a serious athlete, that could be the difference between, you know, standing on the podium or not. Oh, absolutely. So what's the secret sauce? Does meditation somehow make you immune to mental fatigue? Well, that's the million dollar question. And there are a couple of main theories. One is that those who meditate are just more used to this kind of mental workout. Their brains are just better at staying focused under pressure, you know, because they've trained that muscle. So like they've built up mental stamina along with physical stamina? Right, it's like their meditation practice is giving them this edge when it comes to dealing with that mental fatigue. The other theory is that both groups were equally fatigued, but the meditators were just better at, you know, pushing through it. So it's not that they didn't feel the burn, they were just better able to handle it. That's still pretty incredible. It really is, and you know, it digs into this whole idea of perceived effort. Oh, wait, right. Basically, it's like our brains have this built-in governor, right, that tells us to stop before we've actually hit our physical limits. Wait, hold on. You're saying our bodies can actually handle more than our brains let us think we can? That seems to be the case. This governor, it's influenced by all sorts of things. Stress, anxiety, even just our own beliefs about ourselves. Wow. There was this crazy study where they showed cyclists subliminal images okay. of happy faces. And those cyclists, they could ride for a full three minutes longer than the ones who were shown sad faces. And their effort levels were the same. Get out. Just from seeing a happy face, you're messing with me. I'm not. It just goes to show how powerful our minds really are, how much influence they have over our physical performance. But here's the kind of the other side of that coin. 
talks about how those everyday anxieties we have, the pre-race jitters, all of that, it can actually sabotage our performance. Interesting. So yeah, our brains are powerful, but they can also be our own worst enemy sometimes. Okay, I'm seeing the uh, the dilemma here. Yeah. So how do we work with that? Do we all need to become like sports psychologists for ourselves? In a way, yeah. It's about learning to manage those mental roadblocks. And a great place to start is with mindfulness. Mindfulness. It's everywhere these days. But what does it actually mean, practically speaking? At its core, mindfulness is about paying attention to the present moment, like right here, right now, without judgment. It's about noticing your thoughts and your feelings without letting them, you know, sweep you away. It's about creating that little bit of space between you and that inner critic. So instead of getting totally caught up in those negative thought loops, I'm too slow, I can't do this, you're just observing them. You're not letting them control you. Exactly. And that's huge because it gives you the power to actually choose your response. You can acknowledge those thoughts. Okay, I'm feeling anxious right now. And then choose to focus on something more helpful, like your breathing, your surroundings, whatever works. So you're training your attention, just like you train your muscles. You got it. And the more you train it, the stronger it gets and the better you become at staying present, staying focused, even when things get really tough. Okay, yeah, I'm seeing the connection. But how do you actually, like, do it? Are we talking about meditating on the starting line of a marathon? Well, it can be as simple or structured as you like, really. Some athletes, they swear by having a daily meditation practice. Okay. Just to kind of build that mindfulness muscle. Like a mental warm up, you know, before the physical one. Yeah, you could say that. And then others find that bringing mindfulness into their training itself is really effective. What do you mean by that? So like when they're out on a run, really paying attention to their body signals, noticing how their muscles feel, how their breathing changes, that sort of thing. It's all about being present in their bodies, which then, you know, translates into better performance. There's just like so much more in tune with themselves, right? Right. And that awareness, it helps them make adjustments, pace themselves, push past those mental barriers. So yeah, it's not just about meditation as this separate thing. It's like a whole way of approaching your training and your competition. So you're saying that anyone can benefit from this, whether they're you know, an elite athlete or just trying to like get through a workout. It's about incorporating these mindfulness techniques into your routine. It's almost like discovering a hidden superpower. Kind of is, right. You're tapping into the power of your mind to not just overcome your limitations, but to actually enhance your capabilities. This is pretty mind blowing. And it goes way beyond just endurance sports, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. This whole idea of training your mind to manage stress, to stay present, to tap into those really deep wells of willpower we all have that applies to, like anything you're passionate about in life. But what if instead of just trying to like manage those feelings, we could actually use them? What if we could transform that stress into, you know, fuel? But what if it's actually just our body, you know, gearing up, getting ready to meet a challenge? Okay. Your heart's not racing to scare you. It's trying to deliver more oxygen to our muscles, right? right? You're saying? It's like that feeling you get right before a big presentation. It's not always a bad thing. Yeah. Sometimes it's like, okay, I'm ready for this. Right. And the research actually suggests that making that mental shift from, oh no, I'm doomed to bring it on. It can have a real physiological impact on your body. Things like, you know, lower cortisol levels, sharper focus, even higher pain tolerance. That's what it seems like, right? Yeah, and, you know, the more we learn about this stuff, the more we realize those limits we put on ourselves. They're often, you know, all in our heads. It's true. We are capable of so much more than we think. This stuff applies to literally anything you're passionate about, anything hmm. you're working towards. Training your mind to manage that stress, to stay present, to really tap into those like deep wells of willpower we all have. That's how we achieve those big goals, those things we thought were impossible.